Well, I have this piece of leather wet from the last video where I was doing this meander border pattern. I figured I'd do a demonstration on something that I've always kind of liked doing just as a freehand practice and also just something that I can cut out of a piece of scrap and carve. And that is to carve a leather feather. Now, when I used to work at a leather store, I would do these all the time and just kind of leave them laying around. It was a good way to kind of start the conversation about learning tooling or learning leather work in general to anybody that came in. And I start with just two lines that kind of curve a little bit into each other. They're kind of together on one point, not really on the other. And that's the vein of the feather. And then I'll do the outside of the feather. As two curves. That sort of parallel those. Then I have these bevelers. And they each angle a different direction. Instead of having straight lines, I'll show you here on this. We do a, an angled line. And there's a left and a right of these bevelers. They're the um, B202, L, and R are what's labeled on them. So I'm doing this right, that side of the line. Now, if your piece is wandering around like this one wants to, a uh, little sandbag like this can help keep it from moving. And these two bevelers will lay down our line. And the veins of the lead, of the feathers. Let's connect those together a little bit better. Once we've got those lines that we've got for a reference, you take a hair blade tool, which is a specialty type of swivel knife blade, and it has a bunch of little fine lines on it. And we'll just use those lines left from the beveler as sort of a guide. Sort of show us the angle. Then we've got a little bit of around that edge where that just went past that edge and we want to get under to where we can get this uh, feather cut up off the background so I'll go ahead and bevel around the outside of it with just any beveler I'll use a textured one but you could use a smooth one As usual with beveling, be sure to get those corners really well.
Now that it's sort of starting to look like a feather, but I really want to separate it up from the background and add a lot of depth to it. And to do that, I'm going to use a regular X-Acto knife, craft knife that you can get just about anywhere. A new blade in these is usually helpful. They're usually a lot sharper when you first get them. But surprisingly enough, they can be sharper than that and cut better if you strop them a little bit, even with a new blade. Now this is where we're going to make it really look like a feather. Basically going to go up underneath and slice it off like we're filleting it. And this, of course, is a step that's really easy to mess up. Slice a few little pieces down here. The feathers always fluff out down at their base. We'll slice a few notches into the feather too while we're at it. Just a couple random places, maybe three on a side, maybe two, doesn't really matter. And you can continue to cut underneath this and cut it all the way off of the surface if you want. And I've done these eight or ten inches long, and I've done tiny ones that I didn't even need to use the hair tool for because the beveler put enough texture in that it went all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave this one on the background so to get rid of some of that where it drops in and make it look a little bit more three-dimensional still I'm going to go ahead and take a matting tool around the edge get our sandbag back out
course, techniques like this can be used on pictures if you're doing them, like the wingtips of an eagle might have where they're separated off from the background a little bit so that they stand out a little bit more. Our um, leaves might be cut up from the background the same way that this feather is and stand out more. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vein down the center. I'm just going to use a modeling tool just to round it out a little bit because the veins in feathers are not square edged. So just a little bit of rounding out will make it look a touch more natural. If you have any other questions about any of the leatherworking tools or techniques, go ahead and put something in the comments below. I might know something about it and be able to make another video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful or entertaining, please consider hitting that like button and maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you haven't decided yet, there's always watching another video from this channel and any one of the above will help this channel grow. And thank you for watching.